Just one more thing to say. All right, so this is question seven from paper two, three, 2017 summer. And this is the physics IGCSE paper. This is a fascinating question because it's one of the exceptionally rare times where the idea that moment equals force times perpendicular distance to a pivot it's one of the exceptionally rare times where the perpendicular distance to a pivot actually means something at this level. Well, normally you can just replace that with distance to pivot. So I'm going to look through this question and I'm going to explain to you how to answer it. Question 7. The diagram shows a man holding a sack and a barrel stationary. He applies a vertical force to the handle. The centre of mass and the weight of the sack and barrel are shown. The wheel acts as a pivot. So we can see that there, we've got a little barrel there and a man holding it up. What is the magnitude of the vertical force exerted by the man? Okay, let's look at this question and what it means. First things first, of course, as I said, this is one of the very rare times where the moment equals force times perpendicular distance to a pivot, where that perpendicular distance to the pivot means something. Certainly when you hit AS, when you hit AP, when you hit IB, that perpendicular distance is important. But at IGCSE, it almost never comes up. You can normally just get away with using the idea of force times distance. So let's look at it. Let's examine this question and how to answer it. Let's put our definition of moment up. There we go. So moment equals force times perpendicular distance to the pivot. What does that mean? So as I talk through it, I'll redraw the picture in a more simplified form. Okay, so what we can see here, we have these distances along the bottom there, and we have our forces, force upwards and force downwards. There we go, the weight of the sack and the barrel. Now, force times perpendicular distance to the pivot, what does that mean? That means we carry these lines of action of the forces, these lines are acting along. We draw them, we extend them until such a point as we have a 90 degree angle to the pivot. There we are, so we've got two 90 degree angles there. So we're going to straight away use this moment equals force times perpendicular distance once we realize that these values, 15 centimeters and 45 centimeters, well, technically 45 plus 15, represent the distances from the pivot. This 20 centimeters here is just thrown in to confuse you, and this 80 centimeters again doesn't mean anything in this context. We don't need to worry about the angles. We don't have to reduce things to sine and cosine. We're not looking for the total force exerted by the man. We're looking for the vertical force. And this line here is the vertical force line. That's why it goes straight up and it's uh, extended straight down. Okay, so let's take that image that we have and redraw it. And we'll redraw it, as I said, in a much more straightforward way. So here we go. Here we have a pivot, there we go, and here we have a beam. So I'm going to replace this picture here with that picture there. Let's make it a bit more easy. Now, of course, we've got our clockwise and anti-clockwise moments, and if we draw a little clock, there we are, oops, like so. Our clockwise travels in that direction and anti-clockwise in that direction. So let's examine the two forces here. One, we've got the weight from the mass and barrel, and that's acting straight down, and that has a force of 200 newtons. Then we have another force, which is a vertical force extended by the man, and that has some mystery value. Force from the man, nobody knows what it is, we'll label it Fm. And then we can calculate out what value it should have. Here we know that this is distance to the pivot here is 15 centimetres. And we know the distance between these two points is 45 centimetres. There we go. So we've got one distance here between the 200 newtons and the pivot. It's labeled like pivot as well while we're here. But what I need to do is find the distance between the pivot and the force from the man here. And that's just going to be 45 centimetres plus 15 centimetres, which is 60 centimetres. OK, so straight away now we can use our moment equals force times perpendicular distance, and we can combine that with the clockwise moment equaling the anti-clockwise moment when things are balanced, when they're stationary.
So let's put that in. We've got our clockwise moment equals our anti-clockwise moment. Why do we know they're balanced? Because we're being told here he's holding the second barrel stationary. Okay, so our clockwise and our anti-clockwise moment are equal to each other. So let's just put in the numbers. Our anti-clockwise moment is going to be the force from the man multiplied by 0 0.6 meters. And that's going to be equal to our clockwise moment, which is uh, 200 newtons multiplied by 15 centimeters or 0 0.15 meters. So that means I can find the value for my force provided by the man by rearranging that equation. And that will give me a value of 50 newtons. There we go, so let's come down here. And the answer is B, 50 newtons. So there we are. A tricky question. A tricky question. Where well, everything you need to know to remember it is contained in here. The force equals a moment times a perpendicular distance to the pivot. Which, as I said in my last video, is something that almost never comes up. Well, CIE has proved me to be almost always right there, because here it has come up. So, almost never, and this is the time it has come up. This is how you use it, this is how you approach it. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. And you know what? Just have a great day.